The following audio may contain coarse language and other material that may not be suitable for a younger audience. Viewer discretion is advised. Also, we may spoil anything and everything, so you have been warned. Hello, and welcome to the Movie Gang Podcast, where a group of friends surround the invisible table of the internet and talk about the movie of the week. (laughs) (laughs) That was great. Every week, we will have a different set of hosts talking about their favorite movies. I'm your host, Jack, and for our inaugural podcast, we have, first up, Bobby. Hi, I'm Bobby. Uh, Do you want me to say anything else, Jack? Not really. This is getting really lame very fast. Yes. Next up, we have Peter. What's up, guys? How's it going? And after that, we have Sarah. Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> well, the little video thing, Trevor's the next one, so I keep... I don't know. Never mind. Sit here and drink my wine. And last, but certainly not least, Trevor. Hey, I'm Trevor. All right. This week, we will be talking, taking a look at the Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, and seeing what everyone thought of it. So, Bobby, how did you feel about this movie? You know, I really did enjoy it. I thought that they did a really good job of throwing things back for the fans. Um, There was a lot of, you know, bringing back all the old characters and trying to do their best to reminisce back to the original trilogy and kind of trying to ignore everything horrible that was about the reboot trilogy. Um, So I appreciated that part about it. I was super psyched to see a female Jedi. I thought that was really awesome. Um, I did think that it lacked in plot, but I thought it was really strong and uh, good gags and nice throwbacks and fan service. All right, that's good. I'm pretty sure some people are going to hate it for the exact reasons you love it, but you know. I agree. (laughs) It's going to happen. I was starting with positive stuff. Wow. (laughs) Peter, you're up. Uh, I also I also enjoyed it. I, I I liked it because 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 at least to me it brought back some of the magic from the original trilogy and like but but instead it was bringing it more to it was it was kind of like re like reintroducing it to it, and and this in the same in the same way like when I, when I saw when I saw my first uh, Star Wars film I'm sorry I didn't see the original trilogy I saw Episode One first I apologize to everyone on Earth so oh, ouch. yeah I'm sorry like my, my dad did not raise me on four on four five and six that was a mistake but. <laughs> I, but the way I saw the Force Awakens, it it was a nice way to, like, show to like show 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 this epic so uh, this epic space opera to yet another new generation. So and so I thought so I thought that it did a really good job on that. Like yes, I agree, it de- it definitely lacked in plot, but it was still a fun movie to watch. And I and I wa- I walked out of the theater for me very satisfied. All right, that's interesting. Um. So, and again, I think of all of them, you hate rated it the most highly of everyone. Yeah. Going as far as to say it was a masterpiece. So I was. We'll I talk was about that harsh. in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we're all the rest of us are bastards. Um, yeah. Sarah, you're up. <laughs> okay. Well, um, pretty much to echo what um, Peter and Bobby have said so far, I really enjoyed it. I've seen it twice already, and I kind of have a standing date to go see it a third time, and I'm not really bothered about that, because I really did enjoy it. Um, I, you know, like Bobby said, I love the female Jedi. I love that she's, you know, essentially the main character, arguably sharing that title with Finn, but Rey is still, um, you know, an interesting character. Again, you know, kind of lacking in plot, and I really hope that we learn more about her and sort of her backstory in the next film. That being said, she is, she appears to me to be quite a strong character in her own right. I appreciate that she's not there just to be the love interest of one of the male characters. That's something that we're starting to see a little tiny, tiny bit more in Hollywood, but for the past entire history of Hollywood, that's arguably been the purpose of female characters, is to be the love interest for the hero. But now we have a female hero, and that's great. I really appreciated the look of the film. I liked how they didn't try to make all of the machinery and things look like it was all brand new, kind of like they did with Star Trek. 
in the reboot. Um, the machinery still looks like that sort of rusty old metal that everything looked like in A New Hope and Return of the Jedi and so forth. And I mean, you know, the graphics are better because we have better technology, but it still looks the same and it still feels the same. And I really respected the filmmakers for keeping it that way. Um, mm. As a music person, I liked the music as well. Um, it was sometimes bordering on cheesy, I'll admit, but at the same time, it was definitely a throwback to the original music from the original three films, and, you know, yay John Williams for doing that. But then there were some interesting new themes as well, like Ray's theme, I thought was pretty good. Still sort of, you know, creates an air of mystery about her, really, but sort of a, a sprightly mystery, I guess, um, with the sort of the high light flutes and things i don't know i'm kind of going off on the music tangent there but i like the music it was good it felt like star wars but it was recognizably star wars but also still very new and i thought that was good <laughs> well i'm going to come back to that because i need i actually am very curious about your take on the music because for the most part for me like when i was watching it i was like i was like yeah well again i think this is more my main complaint about it being more, less too much of an homage to the original films and too much the, too much of it was from the original films in terms of stolen, but I would be interested to hear your take on how he evolved the themes and if I'm missing something more to that point. But before we do that, we're going to give everyone a chance to speak just before we start, you know, yelling at each other. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> next up is Trevor. Hey, you still got me? Sorry, my video just went out, but apparently I'm still I in still the got discussion. You. So. All right, great. That's oh, okay. We, we can, can still you. That's the you. important thing. I guess basically I thought it was... Trevor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I tried switching off my there video. There there you go. Just keep your video off. Yeah. All right. Now go, let's. All right. We can hear you good now. Go ahead and start. Okay. Yeah. Um, I basically thought it was good for a Star Wars movie, but still not like just generally a great movie for me. Um, I really part part of me really gets the argument that it was good to reintroduce the whole franchise over again after the prequels, and I think it did that really well. Um, but like, still kind of halfway through. With especially some of the villains and kind of like the character motivations that kind of lost me a little bit. But I still had a really great time, like with the visuals and the feel of it and some of the dog fights, like um, with those X-Wings and the TIE Fighters, like when they, uh, yes. when they ambush the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, um, that was pretty what, like the canteen scene. <laughs> mm. was, yeah. Like there were definitely yeah. moments like yeah. that that got me just, yeah, jumping up and down in my seat practically. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah well, i guess that leaves me as the most negative member of the podcast then if you're not going to be honest about it trevor <laughs> um, <laughs> so i i well i think essentially for me the movie was the first 20 minutes are absolutely spectacular and i fell in love with the new characters the new diversity the cast everything about it and then it just goes off the deep end for me about halfway through and exploring characters drop pr uh, thread lines all the way through it to the point that I didn't. I feel like they truly un misunderstood the meaning of the term homage to some extent in terms of we're re-exploring the original Star Wars just in kind of a less interesting, thorough way. And for me, that doesn't make a good movie. I've seen this movie before, and it's better, and it's called the original Star Wars A New Hope, and that's what I like about it. I like the first 20 minutes, and I'm still extremely excited to see where it goes and to see what they do with 8, which is hope. here's hoping that, like, like The Empire Strikes Back, we get <coughs> off an interesting take on Joseph Campbell's... Um, hero's journey and when we do a deeper read into the whole universe which is what i think i think the empire strikes back is what makes star wars good yeah. and so maybe eight could make me rethink my thoughts on this movie but at the same time like it's it created a great universe and then couldn't let the original series go like it couldn't like it didn't operate in the background of what i thought about the movies like it was too up in front of your face and that's the thing is too much of a fan film and it is true that's exactly what it is it's 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 a full length star wars fan film and you know some people might like it for that i myself uh didn't necessarily so like I said, <laughs> um, so, but parsing out what we talked about it, man, that just brought, uh, I'm glad everyone brought the mood down. Y'all are like tilting your head. Oh yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like, you know, yeah. it, no, it's, 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 it's nice to like, to like have like after the first three of us were like, yeah, this movie was great. And like, just have like two differing opinions. Like it's like, it, it gives us something now for the rest of this podcast to like go from and like, like really Talk discuss. About. So it was, so it was, yeah, it, was yeah. exactly. it was, it was more interesting to hear. It was, it was, it wasn't like me like, Oh damn it, Jack. It was more like, okay. Like, <laughs> like, 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 let's consider this. Like, like, let's talk about it. Yeah. 
and I think I think like the two things that I saw there here, I just I want to I want to talk eventually about the diversity and the music and kind of some of the like the things is because like I do not deny that the movie is well constructed. The craft of movie making is on is totally on show and is done in such a way that you cannot argue that it is well made. I'm, that is not something that I would say. I think my entire issues lie with the plot line and the divergence from it. Like, and it's also issues is like I don't even dislike the new characters. I love them. I love Kylo Ren. I think he might be a better villain than Darth Vader. He's certainly more interesting by nature. I know that's a big He's more statement. layered. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. He's just layered. Anakin with dark hair. Oh my god. No. <laughs> no, that no. is something I'd like to talk about though because he was kind of angsty for me. I, I know he is whiny, but that doesn't mean he can't Definitely go somewhere whiny. interesting. I mean, like, do you remember Anakin and the and the Attack of the Clones? Like, the difference between the two is like, I think, I think, I think, like, a whiny villain is much more interesting than a whiny main character. Do you know what I mean? I'm more forgiving. That of is yeah. true. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Like, like I mean, like Anakin was just like you're just like eye rollingly. God, I hate everything. Attack of the Clones, and that's not to say like I like. I like the Phantom Menace. Like I would rate the Phantom Menace higher than this movie at points. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to piss oh, everyone you off. You have a lot of people <laughs> who are like one, two, just ouch. Yeah, I, was, I, I know, I know, but that's 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 probably getting towards into hyperbole territory. But the point is, <laughs> first off, we wanted to talk about the plot. Why why do you guys like the elements of homage to the first one? Because I think for me, like a lot of it comes down to the reappearance of the Rebel Alliance, the lack of in, the lack of introduction to the Star Killer base. And just as Leo Organa and the originals things and like things like how Han Solo just randomly runs into them and how there's a lot of elements of just kind of like uh, they're not really plot elements that are tied together so much as it's just like random occurrences that cause the movie to be ramped up. Yeah, which is the original Star Wars was such a good slice of like a bigger picture, which is what I loved about it. And to some extent, what I like about like uh, what it's based off, you know, the Hidden Fortress. Um, But why? Why are you guys okay with like how Star Killer Base comes out of nowhere and it's like a planet? It's like, oh, we're we're upping the ante. Well, I think for me, like I, there are a lot of elements of the plot that I really thought were stupid and were just kind of mishmash, like mm-hmm. hodgepodge together, and it didn't flow. It wasn't okay. So it wasn't a good Star Wars film if we're thinking about the original trilogy. You know, you have A New Hope and you have an Empire Strikes Back and, like, I mean, you have, like, real meaty plot that makes sense and flows into each other. This movie didn't have that. But what I did like is after... I I was so disappointed with the reboot trilogy. I mean, I didn't even... I've seen each of them once and I can't watch any of them again because they were horrible and they ruined it for me. And Star Wars was my childhood. So from my perspective, I liked bringing back all those characters and I liked the way that they, you know, we got to see C-3PO again and we got to see R2-D2 and we got to see Leia and we got to see Han and at the end you get to see Luke. I mean, it's pretty nice to see... Right, but it's really nice to see all those characters that I know and love, and yeah, they didn't come back in a way that was organic and made sense plot-wise, but I'm sorry, I fangirled all over the place. I was super psyched to see all those people. I think so. I mean, that's the thing is, are we separating? Oh, go ahead, Peter. No, I, I, I was I was just gonna like kind of piggyback off of Bobby a little bit. Like, I I think I think that's why for a lot of people, even even though they will even though they will definitely have their grievances as far as like plot is concerned and like and like really continuing the narrative. I think I think that's wh- I think that's why a lot of people like enjoyed it because we got to have those characters back from the original trilogy. Yeah. Like, it, it, and ins- instead of it being like totally new like it, instead of being like totally new world from 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 like the from the prequel trilogy and the like with the only connection being obi-wan kenobi instead it was like no let's bring back let's let's bring back like the characters that 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 you grew up knowing and loving and that you have wanted to see on film for the longest time see i would take the opposite yeah. point of that in that and I, I know we're getting like good positive points right now so i don't want to interrupt but um like i would have been fine with them just not using any of the old characters and Mm. starting over for as much as i think they actually use them very well i think like the problem for me is that the the, for me the elements that they're trying to recreate and to create all this fanboyism um hurts the creation of like some really good characters for me like uh like for instance why does ray at the end of the film 
just up and leave Finn before she does like doesn't have it's like and it's really they, it does a really poor job of making a sense of urgency because like she can't even wait around to make sure he's okay or wake up yeah. and like she's just already flying off with Chewbacca in the Millennium Falcon to go get Luke and that's the point is like the only thing they wanted there they wanted to have that fanboy moment where they find Luke on a planet being Obi Wan Kenobi and Yoda all at the same time oh fun fact by the way Alec Guinness is actually was actually when he played Obi Wan Kenobi is younger. Than what Luke's than Luke Skywalker is played as um, by oh my god what's his name Mark, Mark Hamill is now. Mark Hamill's right now <laughs> Mark Hamill's lo- older than Alec Guinness dude when he played Obi-Wan really Obi-Wan. yeah wow. yeah seriously I know it freaks me what? out um, That's weird. but I know I didn't realize Mark Hamill's that old me really. either. <laughs> Never but it, but the point I guess I guess like he started in a film when it came out in like 1977 so yeah know. yeah that's <laughs> yeah. fair when you think about it <laughs> but the I think the whole like for me like the whole thing is like the inclusion of the original characters felt like we were making plot loophole jumps through the whole movie to try to include these things and I think that's what bugged me about it and cr- and lowered it as a film as a piece of like fan propaganda it is <laughs> artfully done <laughs> like I'm not I was gonna argue. say, like, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said right. at all. No, but I, I just think our level of enjoyment differs. Fair. Like, Fair. you, you see it from it. a more critical standpoint, and I, you know, purely see it from you know the overeager fan perspective of like, oh yay, Han and Leia are reunited. But oh my god, C three PO is on the screen. <laughs> I was literally more excited about seeing C three PO than I was <laughs> about seeing Leia or Han or any and of them was... because I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know he was coming. And he back. was still just so was like, oh my as god. awkward. He just pops up, ruins a le- he... uh, yep. ruins a moment. Yes. Like hello, and it's just like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually C three PO as yep. always. <laughs> exactly. Wonderful. <laughs> and it, I love it because it's 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 such a it's such there's so many poor uses of C three PO in the prequel trilogies is like they just don't understand this character anymore or like they've obviously replaced him with their own funny character Jar Jar Banks who still <sighs> what doesn't steal scenes ruin scenes but depending Bobby, on how you I think, think we about just it. Made the same face. <laughs> I know, yeah. I saw it. It was really funny. It's kind of horrifying on my end. I thought you were going to reach out and choke <laughs> me through the internet. Um, but the point the point is, like, you know, it's it's an understanding of, like, his usage in the scene. He was always used in empires to cock block Han and Leah on the Millennium Falcon. That was the whole point. And they, he does that, and they use him exactly in the same way. And I think that's the best thing for me. If, if you're going to enjoy this series, and we're going to admit to being, like, fan jizz spunk, which is apparently what it is. It's, <laughs> just, like a, it's just like an overridden fan orgasm, which and, and, and you know, you know, I I like I like you know, man, I I read stuff that you know you shouldn't. I don't know. Fan fiction. I, I'm trying to Where are you going with this? <laughs> you I'm, read I'm fan try, fiction. I'm trying, just just I do admit read it. fan fiction. I do. Uh, I was gonna say pornography at first, but then I thought that might be too on much. some levels, um, yeah. But it, the point is, is like that's that's it, to some level that is what it is. In some to some extent, it is fan fiction, and I think that's. I mean, for better or worse, I don't dislike fan fiction, and I, there's a lot of it that I love. But like to, to for me, like I'm never going to say that fan fiction holds a place in the cultural zeitgeist, and that's the point. Is well, I mean, it does. Like as a as a group of like as a group of works, as a, as a group of things affecting the culture that it is, does. But it's not going to be the same way for um, Star Wars. Like, the original Star Wars is the second most, and when you adjusted for ticket pricing inflation, is the second most earning film of all time, I think, behind Gone yeah. with the Wind. And that's the point, is that this movie is not as important. This movie is junk food to the stroke that the original Star Wars touched off in all of us in, in a long time ago. It hit a cultural moment in time, and it may, it, it's, the original Star Wars is not actually the best movie. Like, I don't think George Lucas like knew what he had. I mean, it hit fire, and it hit a moment in time and really set fire to people in such a way. But it was this original thing, and it was, it was constructed for itself. I don't feel like this movie is constructed for itself. I think I experienced it a little differently because I did not buy into any of the early hype. I didn't look at, you know, cast lists when they were posted. I didn't watch any of the trailers when they got posted on the internet. Not a single one. Yeah, I didn't buy into any of that. So I went into that movie blind and I, like, just because I liked Star Wars, the originals, um, I think that's why I experienced the film so positively because I think... I watched this happen with a lot of my coworkers. They started watching all of the trailers and they started debating me like, what do you think is going to happen? How are they going to use all these old characters? How are they going to make this plot work? And they got so invested into this being this 
huge thing that it was a giant letdown when they saw it. And I think that happened to a lot of people because unless you're really into it for the fan service, and yeah, it's basically fan fiction, unless you liked it for that, you're going to find a lot of things lacking. And I feel like I experienced it so nicely because I didn't get involved before the movie came out. I only got involved with the actual screening. I think that's probably fair because like like for me like I think like to some extent like I feel like I see a lot of people f looking at it with rose colored glasses and maybe like at the same time I'm my viewing could be construed as rose colored glasses too because let's be honest I spilled more ink online over talking about cast listings and all the crap than any than like it's yeah. ridiculous like I think about yeah. how much actual fucking time and effort I put into like fucking writing forum posts about this shit and I'm just like fuck me man I need a life um <laughs> I'm just like I just well no but like that's the kind of thing like you know I I think like like f the act the difference between it then and now is like the act of working on these things and looking at the stuff and trying to decode them and figure out what's going on is in itself like it's it's really 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 fun like that's the point like it's 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 a pastime in itself so like these movies are cultural events in the same way that like like i don't like people go to star wars and it's like oh yeah i saw star wars but the whole point is so i can go tweet about star wars yeah. and i can go write posts on reddit or something along those lines so i think like for me like being plugged into that culture does change the whole perspective it also sees like shows a lot of more of the negativity up front and i'll, I'll agree to that i'll agree to like looking at this whole thing through those cl glasses like maybe i think that jj abrams did capture that first like pounce like you know that that you know that first thing when star wars pops on the screen and pounced on you and you saw those giant ships flying all over the place and it was that magical experience like maybe he did recapture that to some extent for the viewer but like i guess to some extent it was lost on me and maybe it might in my argument i would argue that a lot of people that's very unusual bobby i'm just i'm just gonna put that out there like i, I think I that, that is not the norm and i think that maybe then like th like i don't think the original star wars would do as well in our current generation or our current culture but in I think defense, that's probably true. In defense of the new movie, though, I do think that... Okay, so let's look at A New Hope when it came out. Your character development isn't super amazing on its own, and the plot is okay, but it's not amazing on its own. And what makes it so amazing is the movie that came after it. So my defense of the new Star Wars is, is they have set up a lot of things that could be really, really cool in the yeah. next movie. They're not super cool right now, but we have this badass female Jedi who came out of freaking nowhere, Literally. and she has all of these powers and skills with the Force that no one else has shown before. We have a dark <laughs> and brooding teenage, basically, villain who could be all kinds of crazy and weird in the future, and he's got a really cool <laughs> lightsaber, so that's awesome. We have a renegade stormtrooper. First of all, stormtroopers are human now and not clones, and that's really cool. And he, like, runs away and is clearly in love with our female Jedi, and we've got, you know, this really awesome whoa, pilot who's just, like, whoa, swimming around whoa, here. Whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta unpack a lot of that <laughs> shit. Okay, first up is Sarah. She was us. <laughs> what? You, we were talking and you were agreeing with me, so keep agreeing with me. <laughs> I, uh, I don't remember. I got lost somewhere in Bobby's argument. <laughs> I know, that was. Okay, unpacking the bits that you was. I agree with you that probably, like, I'm not going to be able to tell. I do not think we're going to be for almost a generation to tell the impact of the Star Wars and to understand how it is because this is going to be one of those arguments that splits people down the line. I agree with that, first off. I do also agree that, like, without knowing the next two films, we're not going to be able to judge the quality of, that, of these films. The same thing was said about The Phantom Menace, and I agree. We didn't all crap on the Phantom Menace as much till after the fact. We didn't crap on it until yeah. we saw Attack of the Clones, and after Attack of the Clones, everyone was crapping on everything because Attack of the right. Clones is literally the worst. The worst. The worst. worst. So Absolutely. No, not in not in contention. But I wanted to I wanted to pack something else, uh, unpack something else here, and I I have an argument to make with you specifically, and I agree with this, and I think that one of the through lines with this, and we all agree we like the diversity boost, and I agree with that, I totally do. But one of the things that I wanted to ask is like a lot of you guys have cited that you want to see more of Ray, you want to see more of these characters, you want to see more of the things, and like I agree, like that the 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 third act reveal of Ray being a Jedi wasn't like. Uh, 
it wasn't necessarily well done inside the movie, but like the genius of putting John Boyega on the cover with the lightsaber and making you think like reverse in your mind. And then you have the reveal of that. That's like a, that's a, that's an unbelievable well nice done twist. turn. But the point is that I don't think we didn't spend enough time with these characters to get a feel of them. And I think that's a, that's a connotation of the movie. So like expecting this to be a good movie at the same time saying like, Oh, did it do a good job of these things? No. Like at the same time, like there's the argument popping up on the internet that Ray is essentially a Mary Sue. And now before y'all kill me, don't kill me quite yet. Let me explain myself. I know back up. Yeah. Um, but the point is like, I would argue that Luke Skywalker oh, no, yes, is a Mary Sue I totally character. agree with that. But, but but the, the thing uh, is, sorry, like, for, is... for us, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Jack, but for us non-super film buffs here, but could you exactly describe what's meant by the term Mary Sue Sorry, character? sorry. I apologize. I apologize. Um, so the idea is just that, like, she's a wish fulfillment character to some extent. Okay. Um, so, she like, has it's, a perfect a, it's moral essentially an, inset, an insert for then, the author. Like, yeah. it, this is me as a person, and then all of a sudden I do everything magical they're like and I a, win the they're day. Like a, they're like, Got it. like a semi-generic character that, like, that is, that is able to so perfectly play off everything happening around them. And okay. the reason I was super defensive out of off the bat is because there's a subgroup oh. of meninists that are arguing that Ray is a Mary Sue Meninous. character, and it's mm. bad. But like that's yeah. the point is I'm not taking their side of the argument. I'm suggesting that the role of the main character of Star Wars is inherently, to some extent, Mary Sue. Yeah. I mean that. I mean that comes with well, yeah. many different things. You have that. Mm. That comes with the territory of being the main the character of a Star Wars Star Wars film. I mean, like I mean, it's kind of like when you look at Luke and like Luke in a, in a yeah. New Hope. He had no idea about his Force powers until Obi Wan Kenobi came in, and all of a sudden he's just doing running around doing all this shit over the over the course of the, over the course of that of that yeah. and then the next two films. Exactly. Come on. Yeah, he Plus, can suddenly have magical missile bank shot powers. Yes. <laughs> right, and I don't think you really have a, a, a good option to move away from the Mary Sue type character with the way that Star Wars is built, because it's kind of built on this like quasi-religious mm. idea of the Force, and like it's in everything, and it is everything, and to actually be successful at using it, you kind of have to be perfect. Um, and that's why we get the whole like defense of good and evil thing, and S Star Wars is kind of just sets itself up for its main character to turn into a Mary Sue. No, I think that would be my argument, and I think that's the point, is, like, saying that New Hope, like, I think that's the whole point, is, like, me passing judgment on this movie is not good, but, like, the same sort of thing, like, New Hope isn't as good as we think, and it has a lot of this crap in there, and that's mimicked into Ray. And the point I'm right. making is just, like, without Empire Strikes Back, how can you say that it's a good movie? It's the, it's the epicness of the franchise itself that's inherently good without the franchise this movie isn't great no that's totally true it needs the franchise to stand on to even be a, a movie that you mm -hmm. want to see on it standing but, on its own it's got not enough it's just it's not there but i do have to appreciate you know yeah ray is kind of an empty vessel that we can pour our hopes and dreams into you know she yeah. can be the greatest and jedi in the world and we can believe in that and that's awesome deserve to have yeah an yeah and i, I get that and that's fun um, and that's I, I really enjoyed that but i also have to look at it from you know i'm a girl and my main character to look up to this whole time has been leia and not that I'm gonna shit on Leia, but I mean, we did have her in a metal bikini strapped next oh, to yeah, a fucking yeah. slug, and we were like, yeah, that's our woman! That's the one I wanna look up to. And you know what? I just don't. I don't wanna look up to that, but I can look up to Ray. She's awesome. I will. I May I make an observation? Yes, yes yeah, Sarah. Sarah. Real quick. Um, the three minorities in our group of five chatters all rated this film really highly, and the two <laughs> cis white males rated it kind of You garbage. suck. Yeah. You suck. Wait, so oh, my God. God. It's, it's an clearly, clearly, it is because there's a black man in Star Wars. Yeah. I can't hack it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not trying. I'm not. Look, I'm not upset about it. I'm not. I'm not pointing out. Out, but the whole point is that I. I just think, to some extent, like we we do create these things. I'm. I'm think for me, like rating it on the norm. Okay, you know, I'm just gonna tether out now that you've pointed it out. Now I feel bad about it. <laughs> it's just. A, <laughs> I, thanks, I didn't Sarah. mean it as an accusation. Um, I just. I realized it. I was like, hold on. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Get back I think to this you, idea you may that, have a point. Um, that Star Wars characters don't need to be like complicated characters because they exist in a universe where like good and evil is really like 
strictly defined because of the force kind of thing because that's true there's a dark side of the force and a light side of the force is there a gray area of the force well, I mean, there is in the right. extended universe, but that doesn't exist anymore, so mm. fuck you. Well, time to go far, far away. <laughs> because I it seems that, like they're I trying to the make the villains more complicated than they've ever To been some before. extent. You're good. No, my, my question is, like, with Kylo Ren, he's a better character than Darth Vader was. You can you could argue very easily because he's more complex, right? Um, but, like, I don't know if <laughs> the the protagonists in the new film really match that. I mean... I don't know. The villains just kind of lost me too because I mean with him, I, I agree. With Kylo I think Ren, Kylo like Ren kind of told he's complicated. And we don't get his full backstory yet. We kind of have to wait for it until right. the next film, which makes sense that you would want to build it up. But I mean, I think to some extent, like I would say that like he's he's more of a complicated villain than Vader, and I think that's the thing is I like the new characters because I think they were looking at more complications to them. Finn is infinitely more complicated than than Rey to some extent, and I think that they show that and actually give him the time to develop that. And I think that's that's the issue that I see here is that we're looking at new characters and new things, and like at the same time they're setting up things that aren't homages to Star Wars, and I love that. Like Kylo Ren is not an homage to Star Wars. Like I mean, he's an homage to like Vader and Anakin and all that jazz, but at Grandfather. the same time, like he's his own introverted character in a new position. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, it's that sort of thing. As opposed to like Finn is entirely original, and then Ray is is essentially a diversity diversified version of Luke Skywalker, and that's I mean with different stories and kind of a different backdrop and kind of a whole different kind of universe. At the same time, they're but not their purpose revealing. is the same. It it seems. Yeah, yeah. I think it is, but I think they're also not dropping enough information about Ray to like give us some sort of second act reveal. Like, there's obviously some sort of thing to do with her background that they're just not making it. And I think that's something is, like, I think the issue is, like, this. we're doing the J.J. Abrams thing of, like, there has to be some sort of reveal post-trailers. And he's obviously got to set up a big one for Empires because he, feel like, he feels like he has to mimic the original Star Wars movies. So there's some something that has to come together and be a reveal and Empire Strikes Back. And, or, you know, obviously Star Wars 8, apologies. But the idea so is, like, whatever that reveal is... What? Trevor? Oh, I just said you're already calling it The Empire Strikes Back. That's funny that the, the <laughs> symmetry is know, there for well, you it's already. Just, well, I, that's the thing, is, like, they've set up some sort of second act reveal that's supposed to be really cool, and J.J. Abrams keeps teasing it in little tweets, and it pisses yeah. me off to no end. Right. Um, but the point is that, like... Like, there's something about her character. Like, are we not revealing the characters for a whole movie? Are we kind of hurting an individual movie to set up other movies? Which didn't happen in the original Star Wars. It was much smoother, and I think that's my I think that's my criticism of this one. It's too in this movie is too in love with its fan f- with its with its source material, and it's also like to some extent. Um, I think to the some movie extent, is too, too in ex- love with the trilogy setup. And that's its biggest flaw is that it's right. already banking on the idea that there will be two more. So you right. don't have to reveal all the cards in your hand or even allude to them in the first film. And I, I agree. I think that's a major flaw because they've already assumed there will be two more. Obviously, there's going to be two more. But I think George using Lucas, that yeah. using that structure and sticking with it so firmly um, has ended up being a bit of a detriment to the actual plot development of this film. Right. George Lucas did not know he was going to get another Star Wars. Like, and everyone bet against that movie. So, like, I think that movie was created specifically to be the last movie. And I think that's how you should go about creating a movie. I think that's the thing. Is like, though, I mean, Empire is obviously. I mean, but Empire is a sequel that's better than the original. So, like, Empire is like the. I think of all movies is like the kind of the the anti what should go right type of thing <laughs> like mm-hmm. it shouldn't be more it shouldn't do better it shouldn't do these kind of things or expand upon the universe in such a manner as that but like i think that's that's not true for most movies and typically not so but i don't like building towards a movie i'm not going to see today i like enjoying enjoying the movie i went there to see and i think that's i think that's a fair point to say that and i think that it trying attempting to build a series in such a manner as to kind of look up at the point and like missing the point of the movie excess and maybe hurting its runtime and that sort of thing for all these plot contrivances I think is a mistake I wouldn't totally disagree with that I think that the fan service was really nice and I think it was important and I think it needed to be done to get people back into the theaters especially after all this time I do I think it was necessary I know you're going to disagree with me but I think it was necessary 
but I do think they did it in the sacrifice of the overall plot and the overtell overall storytelling. And if we took this movie away and it wasn't a Star Wars film anymore, I think it would make a great fun summer blockbuster, but it wouldn't be a great movie. Okay, and, and that's that's a fair point. Like, it would make a fun summer blockbuster. I would be very accepting of this movie in, in another context. And I actually think this movie, outside of the context of Star Wars canon, would blow me away in terms of looking at things. And I'd say, oh, yeah, it's just it's just dumb fun. Go see it. And I think that's exactly what I would say. I can't actually say that on things. I don't know how I would react to it because it's hard to separate this movie from Star Wars because it's just a giant fan film. That's the whole point of it. Like, yeah. it's not separatable from the canon. Like, and to know how one would react to it. And I think that's, that's, my, that's my essentially beef to some extent is that this movie mm-hmm. as a whole like you know without the Star Wars canon isn't much of, of anything it doesn't make sense and I was just oh I'm losing my point here Trevor help me <laughs> I think your point is that Can it I should stop still making me ca- stand alone as a good movie and that it doesn't do that for you because it doesn't aside right. from right. giving you all the points that it wants to satisfy like the nostalgia and having just kind of a basic plot that you can follow and conclude in one movie it doesn't really try to do anything other than that it doesn't try to do anything new. right and i think the thing is like when jj abrams showed us that he could do something so new and so creative with the first 20 minutes of that movie i'm angry i didn't get to see that movie i'm angry i didn't get to see finn and ray's personal movie do something entirely different and something new and that's the point is like the prequels were at least something entirely new and like that's the thing this movie is not made it's concentrated it's concentrated weaponized nostalgia and that's the point is this movie was made to make the maximum amount of money i agree if they went off and did something newly creative it's not going to fill as many seats it's not going to feed into the star wars thing and i'm just sad that we're not it's disney we're not building towards some sort of ethical point we're not building towards something <laughs> we're not bu- no no i mean we're not building towards some higher form of of cinema where we are truly building to filled seats now and i think that there's an element of that that makes it me kind of sad um that like i mean i don't disagree all movies are a business no, but that, like that, you that know i, I and I, i'm never like kind of put to Sorry. the I mean, yeah, I know, but, like, at the same time, like, it is, it is like, you know, I'm full of shit because, like, I wish, I you know, I, I make Star Wars into something that it never was, which is essentially building towards some, like, greater point. And because it, 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 it took up such an issue in, in like, the, the zeitgeist of, like, culture and, like, I feel like this one's never going to be there because it, it, you know, it doesn't need to be. And it's more aware of what Star Wars was to some extent, which was it, it blossomed into this toy driving sales industry. And this one's aware of it and is doing a good job of cranking up to 11 the elements that led to what the original Star it's, it's Wars kind of, became, it's, which it's, it's, created it's, it's the prequels. It's kind of like how, it's, it's kind of like how old time and like hardcore Star Trek fans are, are, are like, like, like not, ne- not necessarily all of them, but, but a lot of them are upset with, uh, are, upset, are upset with, um, with, with what has been done with the with with the last two movies that J, that J.J. Abrams made and the, and then and then Star Trek Beyond which is coming out later Star Trek Beyond which is coming out later this year and how and, and how uh, these these those couple of films have left behind what Star Trek used to be especially when you look at um, the TV series the Next Generation like a, a, dealing more with the politics and like the social structure of what makes Star Trek in, right. in, in, instead in, I agree with that. In, instead now it's just okay right. give us a straight action film and that's going to be it it's, it's Star Trek just by name alone right Exactly. I mean, I think um, initially in the first film, the casting was good. I think Chris Pine does a really good sort of arrogant uh, Captain James Kirk. I think Zachary Quinto does a wonderful young Spock um, and all of these things. Now, I know we're digressing from Star Wars, but just to sort of um, build on the point... um, Especially after the first film, and arguably even within the first new Star Trek reboot film, it really, really went away from the original feel of Star Trek. Definitely. And for that aspect, or that was one of the few aspects I didn't like it. I actually really enjoyed the Star Trek films, but that's for another podcast. Um, but um, kind of going back to something I said earlier about Star Wars, is that this still feels like 
a Star Wars film. Yes, the graphics are better. Yes, we've got new characters. But it's still recognizably the same universe, you know, 40 years later, I think, is what they said. And, um, and we watched new I don't know, I just I appreciated the filmmakers the, like the reboot Star Wars trilogy. You know, they right. really tried the to go universe. new. You know, uh, we're going to move away from our original that. characters. We're going to show their backstory. We're going to try to, you know, don't create blame the wheel. them creating something new <laughs> on the fact that the prequels flopped. It is because George Lucas is senile. No, it, fuck. no, no, no that's <laughs> like, okay. Like, like, don't blame. I did appreciate George Lucas <laughs> stepping away yeah. for this film because I he agree. ruined his baby. Is what he did. Is he ruined? He no. dropped it on its head, and it was horrible, and it was awful, no, he, and we he, all hated it. George, George, but, George, Luke, George Lucas. So he he needed to step yeah, George away. George ruined a baby that like that he birthed, but then gave away, but then gave away for two films. But then he was like, I want it back for for, for, for I want it back for three more movies. Fucking analogies. What the fuck? Well, and now he sold his baby, so you know you can't have to, it back to Disney, who's going to no. monopolize it and monetize it and. No refunds. Leave the shit out of it. Well, no, it's I'm a not, horrible I'm not. metaphor. We are really bad. At I, I, yeah, can we stop killing we babies so on this enough. podcast? Oh <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Jesus I made it. I made Christ. it weird. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, oh I did. God. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting very no, violent. I mean, but I, I, I agree to some extent. I think that's just the difference. Is like I still have respect for George Lucas trying to create something new. Is like, I mean, and in, in some extent, he is the worst in terms of pandering mm-hmm. to his own fans. Yeah. He has his own vision of Star Wars, and he tr- he attempted in the prequels to go make it. And to some extent, I respect that more than what they're doing now, which is this weaponized nostalgia. And I think that that's shitty, and you can say, like, the prequels were bad and all that. But it's just, to me, it's just like, we're going to follow the same thought process in the next three Star Wars. That's what's going to happen. The Empire Strikes Back going to do that. It might do interesting things, and it might totally change my mind, but it's not going to change my mind about this movie, that this movie was at least a sacrifice to the setup of what might come. Or the last half. I, I agree. Again, I agree with the same thing. And I said, and I stick by what I said at the beginning. The yeah. first half is so good. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. It is. The introduction of Finn. The introduction of Kylo Ren. The introduction of, pa- of, of Rey. The introduction of Poe Dameron. All of that is so good and so Star Wars and so the Nick on. And like, that's what I just like. It took me a while to get to more of a negative reaction as like things started to drop off. And I was like, ah, what's yeah. going on? I don't, I don't get it. And I think that's my... I think that's my thing is I was disappointed over time with what happened. And I think that's the thing is like, cause I wanted this to be its own movie. And I think that's maybe my own personal reaction to it. But at the same time, I can't respect like the, ab- that, like the, just the absence of certain kind of like story elements in lieu of creating something. It bigger started when they, yeah. Oh. Can I insert my own sort of Sarah. unpopular opinion? Yeah. 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 Real quick? Yeah. Do it. I don't, I don't really get the point of Poe Dameron. Yeah, I think he's Finn Poe! Finn Poe fan fiction! That's so what's the point of Poe Dameron. I'm so on board with the Poe po fan fiction. Shipping. But, yes, I, but yes, I agree. Motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> I did not uh. get that ship when I was watching the movie, and I only heard about it on the internet later, and you know what? Finn was totally feeling Ray. I'm sorry. He tried to hold her hand, and she was like, I don't need maybe you to hold Finn my hand. Maybe bisexual. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's going to be our new. Maybe they can all triangle. be together. Like, and like Finn is totally feeling Ray. Ray's, oh, Ray's over here like, I don't give a shit about either either two of you. And Poe's just like, Finn, I want you. I don't need you to fucking hold my hand. Stop that was holding my, my hand. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't need you. I don't need and then, this. And then Poe's over here just like, Finn, love me. Take my jacket. Please. It's like high school. <laughs> Take my letter jacket. <laughs> oh my god, we're going steady now, guys. And everyone's creepily in love with BB-8, which was, you know, not the cutest. I robot. adore BB-8. Oh my okay. god, I'm BB-8 sorry. Is yeah, He's when not... he pops, when he pops the oh, flame I finger, that. I was just like, okay, I like that. That's I mean, good. that's you. Win. You, you is win. It this or is it this? We'll never know. But you're never gonna create a, cu- a robot cuter than R2D2, so I don't really know why they're trying to like compete oh, no with my arguing. cute robots because I'm, I I'm have definitely not arguing that R2D2, st- <laughs> R2D2 still wins, but BB-8 was he was adorable as hell. I want a BB-8. Yeah, I like that both. All right. I I think to some extent that we're wrapping up, or I think what we're going to do is let everyone go around the thing, and we're going to go ahead. I want you all, if you could, if we're going to go down the line, we're going to give a score, and you're going to get 30 seconds to justify oh, the God, existence of the score, and then go ahead and say your name and your Twitter handle. 
All right. Or whatever Twitter or email, Twitter handle, something along those lines that you can be contacted at. Okay. <laughs> or you don't have to if you don't want to. I don't, I don't actually care. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have a Twitter account, and I don't know how comfortable I feel with a bunch of random podcast listeners knowing my email it's address, so I might sit that one out. You're okay. all good. Just the score, and then we'll average the score at the end, and if you have you get exactly 30 seconds to justify it. Going said, we're going to start with Bobby, Peter, oh, Sarah, Trevor, me. Well, actually, let's do it the, let's do it the opposite, actually, this time. I'll yes. start, and then we'll go through Trevor, Sarah, Peter, Bobby. All right. Ugh. So for the Star Wars The Force Awakens, I gave the movie a six because it is half a perfect movie. Um, th- that's, um, <laughs> I think my justification for it is, is this. I really love where this movie is going. I really love what this thing could do. Um, but the second half of it just drops out from under me. And I think that that's kind of like bad to some extent. And again, I'm saying here that five is the average. So I'd say that it is a, an above average movie for everyone that wants to hate me and be like, oh, the 10 score system is broken. Well, we're just trying to do something to give kind of context to this <laughs> podcast. So I'm going to justify more the actual point of having a score system. The whole point is just to give a number on things and it's stupid to begin with and it's entirely impossible to justify. But here we are doing it, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> Trevor. Uh, well, on that note, um, I guess if we're going on a scale rating of 1 to 10, for just that reason, I gave it a five because for me it did half of what a movie should, which is it entertained me and like I had those moments with like the dog fights and everything that I really enjoyed it in the theater. But then towards like the end of the second act, the more I thought about it, and especially after I left the theater, it didn't really do anything for me, give me much to remember. So I give it a five for doing half of what it should as a movie. All right, that's pretty. That, that kind of ripped me off, but whatever, Trevor. <laughs> your decisions and your 30 seconds are your own. All right, next <laughs> up is Sarah Becker. Okay, well, I gave the movie an eight um, because, you know, I don't disagree that it was lacking in plot. I don't disagree that it was largely fan service. However, I really appreciated the fan service just purely from an emotional and... I don't know, just an emotional standpoint, not from a critical standpoint. I thought it was great to see all the characters come back. I love that the two new main characters are a, a girl and um, an African American person. Or is he actually, he, he's actually yeah, African. He, no, he's he? actually, I, don't want he's, to say I that forget wrong. where um, he's from, but yeah, he's African. <laughs> I think so. Don't Nigeria, go. isn't it? <laughs> a person of color. A person of color and a girl are the two main characters, and I think that's great, particularly for um, a, star, a franchise like Star Wars. It's great that they're at least trying to start diversifying their cast, and I think that's very important for Hollywood and for American society. And um, uh, I know we never really came back to the music, that's okay, but I thought the music was fun. I appreciated the homage to the original score, and I liked the new themes that came out of it. So I gave the film an 8 out of 10. Not perfect, but still very enjoyable. All right, perfect. Now, next up okay, is Okay, I gave Peter. Star Wars The Force Awakens the highest rating out of our group, even, even as, as subjective as it is. I gave it a 9 because I thoroughly enjoyed it from purely in a, from purely in a, an entertaining aspect um it was it, it was it was, a, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun to for the for the fir- for for once actually be able to go into a Star Wars film and have it be like the first part of a trilogy whether it be like original prequel or new one so for me it was fun it, I, I just I, I just had fun watching this movie and I know you're all laughing at me and I hate you all I hate you all I hate you all so much <laughs> I'm gonna just go away <laughs> I'm laughing I'm at say Jack. You're laughing at me. <laughs> He's oh, sitting here God, just going like you, this. God, you suck. Even us. Just like when we were in college. Just like when we were in college. I love you so, so much. much. Just, just <laughs> really. I, lo- I, I, I enjoyed this movie. I loved it. I, I've seen you it twice. know I I'm love you. Third time. Mm. I'm waiting for this. Sec- I'm waiting for episode eight to see to see if we get this trilogy's Empire Strikes Back, which like which really make which like hopefully really brings like some meat to this trilogy. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Bobby, Bobby, you're <laughs> up next. Sorry, Sabotage. Peter. Now, for everyone should know that, Peter, that we are not going to continue to sabotage people's 30 seconds. It is 30 seconds of yourself where you can talk over everyone else and no one else can disagree with you. Bobby, go. 
I gave this movie oh my an God. eight. So childish. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> you asshole. I shouldn't be surprised at all. You really okay, shouldn't. Well, no, I shouldn't. I gave the movie an eight, and I gave it such a high rating because this was the Star Wars film that gave me hope that Star Wars can still be Star Wars. And I know that's convoluted. But the prequels bashed me to hell, and I hated them so much, and they made me lose hope in a trilogy that I fell in love with from when I was six years old. And this new Star Wars movie gave me a reason to love the franchise again. I got new characters that I actually can respect um, that did not make me angry that they were whiny and pathetic and love-driven and weak. Uh, I got a villain who was more complicated than simply evil, and I got uh, some really great throwbacks to all of my favorite characters. I got to revisit some worlds that I hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, I got to see the beauty of the CGI compared to CGI in the new trilogy films, where it was just like in your face, we're using all these special effects. It blended much more seamlessly. Yes, there are plot holes, and I can find fault with it if I'm really going to try hard. But I enjoyed the film, and it really made me happy that there was another Star Wars film for me to watch. All right, that's beautiful. And so if I'm going down the list correctly, that is for Star Wars. We uh, I don't even know what it is, but I got the final math. That's the important thing. We gave uh, Movie Gang Podcast, give Star Wars The Force Awakens a 7.2 out of 10. That's, that's pretty that's good. Pretty good. Yeah. That's not bad, actually, in terms of like the other thing. I think like this whole <laughs> math and averaging thing. It's Yeah, it's, it's um, pretty great. Who knew we'd actually <laughs> use maths in real life? Right? I didn't ever expect that to happen. All these liberal arts majors using math. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... That wraps up this Forest Awakens. We're going to do a quick bet, though, for this week, and we're going to just bring it in. So the bet this week we're looking at, obviously, that whether or not whatever we think about the Force Awakens, it's been doing well at the box offices. Currently, I'm going to lay some numbers on you here right now. Star Wars The Force Awakens, for its domestic intake at the moment, is $812, as $812 million at this moment, with foreign being $921 million and a total worldwide at this moment of $1 one of 1.73 billion dollars so that's total for right now it ranks currently um but all time domestic is the number one movie of all time for it is in terms of the domestic product in the united states it has pulled in the most money for a movie all time worldwide it has currently worked third behind titanic which is two point uh, 2.18 billion dollars and Avatar at 2.78 uh, 2. billion dollars and Star Wars is currently at 1.70 uh, 1.73. So well, now hold on, hold on. What uh, what about this chart that you sent earlier where the Force Awakens is at number 15? I'm getting to that right this moment. Okay, if, I'm sorry. So that's pure money. So like if we look at money, like obviously like but let's see like you know when the Gone with the Wind came out like it was 33 cents for like a movie ticket. So, like, if we adjust for the price of movie tickets today, so this is the adjusted uh, for ticket price inflation. So the top movie of all time is Gone with the Wind. That's the point. Is Star Wars The Force Awakens is currently, when adjusted for um, the, infl- the price of inflation for 2015, is the 15th highest grossing domestic uh highest grossing domestic movie of all time in front of it is avatar ben hur the empire strikes backs 101 dalmatians snow white and the seven dwarves the exorcist dr zivago jaws the ten commandments titanic et the extraterrestrial the sound of music and the original star wars as of last night and i and i tell you this because i looked at this chart literally last night it was it was in the 17th place behind jurassic park the original jurassic park and return of the jedi so it is officially surpassed Return of the Jedi and is gaining on the 12th spot Empire Strikes Back and will and again the number two with adjusted for inflation domestic gross of all time is Star Wars the original Star Wars A New Hope so currently when adjusted for inflation Star Wars is at 1.53 billion dollars with Gone with the Wind at the top spot of 1.73 billion dollars Avatar is at 837 million dollars with Star Wars The Force Awakens at 812 million how much, by the time of the next podcast, do you think Star Wars The Force Awakens will have made? And more to the point, where podcast. do you think it'll rate on this list? We're doing this podcast in a, a month from now, right? We're doing this podcast. Like, like, current, current, currently. 
Currently, yes. And I don't... Uh, I can't... I wanted to do it when it was out of theaters, but frankly, like, the way this is going, I have no doubt there's oh going to be an extended... God, yes. Or there's going to be extension of the time or something oh, yeah. along those lines. Like, there's just no way. I mean, if we're going to do this bet, we got to do it now. For all time right. adjusted inflation by next month. So the, per the whole bet is how much do you think it's going to go in a month? And that will be the majority of the earning to some extent, but it will probably still bring in a lot of weekend sales and a lot of people that are just going for, like, the times. fifth time. So... I'm gonna right. I'm gonna be mean here, and I'm gonna start with Trevor this time. Um, all right, as much of a gambler as I am, I guess I'll say <laughs> it'll get to two billion worldwide by next time we meet, and uh, it'll overtake Empire. Oh no no no! Empire, okay, so that's so original. stop, so stop, 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 stop. <laughs> so two billion. None of the movies on this list, when adjusted for this, is just adjusted gross for domestic. So the or top to movie the of all adjusted. time is just, Gone just with the Wind. Just for the U.S. Just for the U.S. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So it's adjusted. So no, adjusted. No, no. Adjusted. Adjusted for modern, it'd be 1.73. Is the was is the most money that ever that a movie 1.73 billion is the most money a movie ever made. When adjusted to today's prices. Right. And keep in mind that The Force Awakens is currently number 15 on right. this list. How about I'll go first? I'll go first. Let me kind of get it okay. just to get it started. I think The Force Awakens will not break a billion, but it'll get it right up next to it. I think it's going to take the, the ninth spot from The Exorcist. I'm going to bet it'll take it'll take in roughly $960 million by hmm. this time next month. Okay. From domestic. And that'll bring it up. That'll bring out. That'll be. That'll make it beat Avatar, Ben Hur, The Empire Strikes Back, One Hundred One Dalmatians, and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and The Exorcist. But it is not going to break the one billion mark with Doctor Zivago, Jaws, The Ten Commandments, Titanic, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Sound of Music, and the original Star Wars. I do not think it'll beat the original Star Wars. I'll take a crack at it next. All right. Uh, I certainly now. don't think it's going to beat the original Star Wars, but I do think by th but I do think that in th or I do think that in a month it will it will crack a billion. So I'm going so I'm going to say it'll I'm going to say it'll get like 1.1 billion. Just a guess. 1.1 billion dollars domestically. 1. 1.1 billion dollars domestic. All right. That would put you Currently, at that point, that would put $1.1 billion mm -hmm. would put you above Dr. Zivago, so it would take the eighth spot, just beneath Jaws at $1.102 billion. Who's next on The Price is Right? All right. Who's up next? Come on. I can do it. Um, I'm actually going to take an under. Uh, I think that Star Wars has begun to fall out of the media. And I think it is beginning to lose some steam and some favor. So I think it is not going to crack a billion dollars. I think it is going to um, hover somewhere around probably 940 or so, which would put it uh, above The Empire Strikes Back, but below The Exorcist, but above Snow White, putting it in the ninth, or I guess 10th place. That would be I the 10th so place. I am so positive, clearly. My right. goodness. Fuck Snow White. I... I I, this this is so me. I, I love to think of, I, lo I love to think the best of everyone and everything. What? <laughs> when did it get oh my dark God. in here? <laughs> it's midnight. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> what background when you started? God damn it! I just looked it's up and day I was like, the here. day is gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, anyways, so next up is Sarah or Trevor. What do you guys? Me, take a roll, guys. Let it spin. I don't know. What I guess I'll take 900. <laughs> 900? Mm hmm. Very nice, sir. So Trevor currently has the low bet with 900 million. That would put him. And the. Uh, that would put Trevor currently above just between Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and 101 Dalmatians. All right. Sarah. I'm going to pretty closely agree with Trevor on this one, actually. I was going to go for about 920. Um, my reasoning for that is, you know, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, when it came out, was a huge fucking deal. It was the first full-length animated feature in the States. 
and huge deal. And I realize that The Force Awakens is made by the same company, yay Disney and, and so forth. But I don't, and it is still definitely a big deal, you know, revitalizing the classic Star Wars series. But I don't think it's as big a deal. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I think these are some pretty good bets. And again, the winner of the next meeting will be able to close out the podcast and tell people they're wrong and not have people be able to talk to them back at the end. So I'm going to lock those in. Chuck, chuck, chuck. There's the vault. It's going. They're locked in. You can't that was it now. Good. All right. Great. That is the Bobby worst vault sound that was effect amazing. I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm probably going to cut chuka, that chuka, out and chuka, add chuka, it chuka, in. Chuka, chuka. <laughs> Are there chipmunks, right? I don't know. It's, it's a vault for many people. It um, doesn't sound very secure. It's secure. a vault for ants. Oh, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> so, this has been the Movie Gang Podcast. Going down the list on our right is Bobby. Peace. Bye, guys. Peter. Sarah. Sarah. Signing the Hossio next time. Signing the Hossio next time. Trevor. I'm out. All right. Thank you guys so much. If you want to get in touch and drop some questions, go to Newman Visual Productions on Twitter and give me uh, just some questions that we can answer for our next podcast about interesting things about us. Please, um, Don't no. send me a bunch of bad stuff. Please just don't. <laughs> no All right. dick pics. I would really appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. That was lame. I'm going to come up with something else later. Yeah, we can do better than that. Thanks.